Hi everyone, Paul Akers, host of The American Innovator. You know, the innovative spirit is alive and well, and everywhere I travel around the world, I bring back ideas and creativity to share with my audience to continuously improve and change the way we live. Welcome to The American Innovator. April 2013, the YPO Manufacturing Excellence Network Tour. We all meet in Kohler, Wisconsin. Leaders from around the world meet to learn about manufacturing excellence and lean manufacturing. The first night we met at Pacina's. We had a nice dinner and we talked about what our expectations were. The next morning we met together and before long we were on the bus and on our way to Aaron's Manufacturing. A quick 45 minute drive up north to Brillian, Wisconsin is where Aaron's is located. They have over a thousand employees in this one plant. Really quite an amazing experience to get inside this world class lean manufacturer. We had lunch, we had a quick breakout session from some of their lean leaders, and then the next thing you know, we were hitting the floor. So, how we got started in lean, we start out, um, we had a burning platform, and we were financially in tough shape, so we had to get going on doing something, or we weren't going to be around for the next generation. So, we started out by training a small group of people in lean. I was one of those people, most of your tour guides today were one of those people in that group. And uh, we uh, just got going, started doing peasant events. We were using a consulting firm. We hired some people that had some background. And uh, that small group taught other small groups. It's kind of like that disciple mentality. So we just kept discipling out. As we... Let's start at the top with Dan. So Dan was a big uh, proponent of it. And then that kind of went down through the organization. So you still need that, that top-down support. Yeah. But you can start at the bottom and work your way up. And I've seen companies do that and it can work, but eventually you have to get the top support. Right. Oh, it's not gonna work. I mean, there's a lot of improvements that happen every day I don't know anything about. Uh, we have a uh, training cells, so we train them offline using TWI training, and uh, they typically spend about a day in the training cell, and then from there they're ready to get moved in the assembly cell, the trainer will follow up with them. We would not be here if it wasn't for So you've been here for 19 years, yes. and what do you think of Lee? I think lean's the way to go. I really and do. why? Because it has changed the way we do things 110%. We used to have stuff everywhere, boxes, baskets. We'd have people looking for parts, pieces. We've gone through, gotten rid of the waste, got it down to manageable numbers, manageable stuff. We know where things are, when we need them. And it just gives you the tools to do the right things. So you saw it from the very beginning before you were doing any lean at all. And what, what was the hardest part about implementing lean? Uh, a lot of it was just mindset. You get, and I was one of them. I was a production person in the beginning. I was actually on the first Kaizen event that we had. And at that point, we went from, well, you got to make parts. If you're not making parts, you're not making money. That was the mentality. Well, we took a step back. Well, yeah, we're making parts, but we might, might not be making the right ones. We might be making the wrong size, color, too many whatever, we took a step back, looked at, you gotta make what you need, when you need it, to keep your customer happy, so. And how did they get that mindset to change in you and others? The biggest thing we had, a, in the beginning, we had an outside source come in and said, basically he was almost like a hammer, so to speak, and I, I don't like to use that term, but it's reality. He, he was, he helped push us in that direction, and once you see it and see the benefits, it really, starts to hit home and you understand why you're doing it. So what you just said is they showed you the benefits and that's when your mindset changed. Yes. And the specific benefit that you saw that caused you to change was? Organization. Organization. Way more organized, way less inventory. Parts, a lot of times in, a, in our daily world here, we can have parts being made on the backside of the building and then within three hours, they're already in a finished unit and out the door on the other side. And that would have never Where happened before. Years ago, we had assembly in one building, paint and fab, or fab in one building, paint and assembly in another. We had parts standing at the dock for days waiting to go to the other plant. And it's not like that anymore. So flow, organization, yep. things just run smooth. Yes. And continue to get better. They continue to get better. We try, it's continuous improvement. That's why they call it. That's one of the catchphrases around here is continuous improvement. If it's not working right, you look back at your tools that we've learned over the years and try to make it better. Awesome. Thank, Thank you. you. So how long have you been at Aaron's? I've been here five years. 
Okay, and what's it like? Uh, the culture is very different. Mm -hmm. um, it takes some getting used to, but as a whole, I like the way the company operates. I like the lean concept. We try to run things very lean, so we have more one-piece flow, and there's a lot of opportunity here. So I When you really say it's here. different, what does that mean? We are trying to get people used to the one-piece flow concept as opposed to batching, so there's a little bit of... People love to batch. Yes, they do. They like yeah. that comfort around them. Did you like to batch before you came here? I've been in lean pretty much my whole career. So oh, you have. I have no experience in the batching. Oh, so when you came here five years ago, you already knew lean. I did. Uh, so this is easy transition. This is for me, yes. Yeah. And so what percentage of the people here do you think are queued up on lean and embrace it 100%? I'd say we're pushing the 70% range. We're getting oh, there. Oh, that's good. There's a few people that are fighting it, but for the most part, we're, we're getting there. And well over a thousand people, so that's pretty impressive. Yes. Yeah. So, what's the hardest thing about getting people those thirty percent? What? Why don't they adopt lean? What's the hardest? What's the obstacle? They've been here most of their working careers. Mm -hmm. It's just something they're used to. So, just trying to convince them and showing that it does work, and just making that change. Some people are very receptive to change. It's the uh, tipping point when you see somebody go from being resistant to, to embracing lean. Is there any particular characteristic you see them start exhibiting that's different? Yes. Well, this really does make my job easier. I actually don't mind doing this. So once they try it and they get into the habit, they're like, yeah, this isn't so bad after all. It does make my job easier and I don't have mountains of parts around me. Then they're more receptive and they'll start coaching their fellow coworkers to do the same thing. That might have been the best answer I've had in 12 years. Right awesome. There. Awesome. Thanks, Thanks so much Thank for calling me out. Awesome answer. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you Thank too. Good to see you again. Good to see you again. Uh, a good operations where you have a, a stable lean would be almost about three to four percent of value added activity than ninety seven percent yes, non value exactly. added activity. That's, right. that's why that's why lean is a journey, not a destination, right? So value added is basically the time it takes to do one unit. So if I were to do one unit from start to finish, processes are stacked on top of each other, nothing ever waits, that's my value added time. My non-value added time is real life. So how's it actually happening? How long, how much am I batching? How much time are things waiting in between processes? So we define value as anything that changes the physical characteristics of the part. So if we're not physically changing the part, it's not value added. So moving parts from that side of the building, this side of the building, all non-value added. I came back in 98, I basically got it the stack. Um, most of the executives I terminated within about 15 days. I didn't know this business, so I kind of knew what to do. I knew what triggers to pull, and I knew that I needed leaders that could actually figure out how to make the changes we needed. Uh, but then I went through about six or eight months where I had about 30 people reporting to me, including the guy that was in charge of the maintenance crew, and, and you know, I had everything coming at me. And I was looking for a VP of manufacturing, um, and I went through several searches and several candidates and, and I had a recruit firm and it was just a nightmare. And I bumped into Jeff in the airport in Detroit. He was on his way to Finland with his other employer and I was commuting back and forth from Jasper, Indiana every week while I figured out what to do because I was running a plant in, in Indiana. Um, we bumped into each other and I figured this is, this is my moment. It still went through. The recruiter didn't like Jeff, that was the funny part. <laughs> After a great talk from Dan Harris, we got to meet his entire leadership team, we got to ask him a lot of good questions, and we loaded back in the bus and we drove back down south to Ken Merth's company, Merth Manufacturing, makers of high-tech mirror technology. Look at, I'm an ex-Wall Street guy, so I'm a financial jockey. I measure our lean by what financials we put out. This one is Thomas Jefferson. Uh, vision without execution is hallucination. The second motive that we go in is speed is a strategy. We flat out go to market, world class. Uh, we, we did this optical design for Toyota in six months and they thought it'd take us three years. Ken means business and he does business with some of the greatest manufacturers all over the world. He showed us his gym for his employees and then after that, we headed back to Kohler to take a tour the next morning of Kohler Manufacturing. But that evening, we got a chance to go to the Kohler Design Center. We had hors d'oeuvres, cocktails, and dinner. The next morning, David Kohler addressed as president of Kohler Worldwide. 
Next, we had some of the top leaders of organizations like Aaron's, Harley Davidson, and Kohler address us on manufacturing excellence and how they implemented a lean strategy. And one last breakout session where we all talked about what we had learned in the past three days. From there, we went on to Bemis Manufacturing, largest toilet seat manufacturer in the world. And we visited both their wood molding plant and their injection molding plant. And we just had a phenomenal tour. Everybody said their goodbyes until next year at the YPO Manufacturing Excellence Network. And a special thanks to Carl and his team for doing a fantastic job of putting on a seminar we will never forget. Remember, life's an adventure. Be a part of the solution. Go out, learn, improve, change, think outside the box. We can change the way the world thinks. Be an innovator. I really gotta stop getting myself in these situations. That's a leopard, and that's an elephant. Yes, and this is a cheetah. Oh, I saw that. Oh, cute. Oh, oh, uh oh.